um, interested in social learning problems and sometimes after a long day of studying social networks, he likes to escape to nature and go mountaineering to kind of have a change of pace, change of environment. I can tell that he's been studying social networks because I tried to Google creep on him a little bit to get things for this bio, and his internet presence is very squeaky clean. There's nothing that I can tease him about except his uh, covert internet presence, I guess. Um, and as an individual who's lived and studied in at least four countries, maybe even more, I believe him to be the real Mr. Worldwide. So Pitbull has some competition, and I'm, I'm very excited to see what he'll say to us today. I'm sure he has lots of interesting things to share after all of his life experiences and research so far. So we'll quickly transition, and I'll present to you Amin Rahimian. Thank you, Naomi, for introduction, and thank you for having me here. Uh, tonight, I will talk to you about uh, learning without recall. It's a work from my PhD research. That's a joint work with Puya Mulavi, who is doing uh, his PhD in economics at MIT, and uh, my advisor, Ali Jad Babai. There are many situations when you want to decide uh, between a set of uh, options. For example, when you want to invest in stock markets, you want to know what is the best performing uh, stock option, or you may want to know the outcome of an election the political affiliation of a person, the most popular brand of a product, or even the uh, best course of action in medical treatment. In all such cases, you have some private observations, and based on those observations, you form some uh, belief about the truth of the case. And uh, these uh, beliefs allow you to make inferences uh, that lead to your decisions. Well, it could be that your uh, private observations are not enough for you to determine the truth of the case. For example, uh, there may be multiple states of the world that lead to the same observations for you. And uh, so you're facing an identification problem in, uh, in determining the truth. And uh, since uh, different people have different observations, then uh, observations of one person can complement uh, the observation of another, so people have, uh, have an incentive to communicate with each other. And these communications uh, occur in a variety of media, which we collectively uh, refer to as social networks. In more practical terms, for example, in uh, distinguishing between two possible courses of action in medical treatment, you need uh, medical expertise to be able to distinguish between them. So if you lack those expertise, then uh, your observations won't, uh, won't give you enough data to make your decision. So this leads to the problem of social learning, which is essentially asking uh, whether just by communicating their beliefs with each other, people can uh, get to learn the truth of the case. Uh, that it's trying to highlight, the key that it's trying to highlight is whether it's possible to aggregate all these uh, private observations across the agents in the network in the hope of uh, learning the truth. Uh, this problem has uh, close parallels in engineering applications as well, where, uh, where you're interested in information processing in network settings. Uh, as an example, consider these five sensor nodes and uh, they want to determine the location of a target node in a square field that is comprised of four triangular regions. They want to know where exactly in which of these uh, four uh, triangular regions the target is. By the symmetry of the square, uh, sensor A cannot distinguish between regions two and three, but can distinguish region two and three from one and four. Similarly, sensor B uh, on the left figure at the bottom cannot distinguish between regions one and two, but can distinguish one and two from three and four. Now, if A and B put their observations together, then together they can distinguish between all the four regions. So together they can exactly determine where the target is. And this is uh, exactly what happens in uh, modeling social, uh, social uh, learning problem as well. And so this problem finds, uh, uh, this problem whenever you have uh, uh, information processing in network settings, in engineering applications, for example, robotic sensor networks, uh, power grid, or even uh, brain uh, and biological networks, it appears and it's uh, studied under the umbrella of uh, distributed detection or distributed hypothesis testing. So now let's see how we can model this problem of social learning. Uh, the, 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 the truth that's uh, of common interest to all of the agents in the network is represented by a random variable theta that is drawn by nature from a, a finite set uh, capital theta. So this is, what the agent, is how we model what the agents uh, want to learn. 
And then at each point, you have some private observations. To model these private observations, we consider some random signals. And these random signals, their distribution depends on the unknown. And that is how these random signals uh, or private observations are informative about the truth. Now, uh, given your observations, you form some belief about the truth. So the beliefs are just a probability distribution on the set of possibilities, capital theta. And uh, the more probability you put on some state, it means that the more you think that state is uh, closer to truth. So agents start with a full support prior belief uh, that represents their uh, subjective biases even before having any observation. And then given all their observations at every point in time, they have uh, some belief that represents their opinion at that point in time. And this learning condition is the convergence of this belief to a point mass on the true state. So you want to put all of the probability on the true state and put a zero everywhere else that's false. To understand this model better, consider an example. Uh, here we have just uh, one single agent that is making private observations. So it has nobody else to communicate with. And given the private observations, you can apply the Bayes rule because you have the likelihood of the signal. And then you can, uh, using the Bayes rule, you can update your belief sequentially at every point in time. And uh, if the likelihood of the signal that you observe under the false state and the true state are, dif are different for any false state, then over time, the agent will uh, put more and more mass on the true state and less and less mass on the false state, so uh, the learning occurs. And th this uh, probability distribution converges to a point mass on the true state. Now let's see how we can analyze this uh, model in a network setting when we have multiple agents. At time zero, every agent observes a private signal. So same as before, you apply the Bayes rule. Starting from your prior, you get an updated belief that represents uh, what you have observed. That's only one private signal at time zero. Now at time one, the agents communicate their beliefs with their neighbors. So at time one, uh, you have uh, an additional information. That is the uh, reported beliefs from your neighbors. Yeah, you can use that belief to make inferences about what the agents may have observed that have led to this belief. And then using these inferences, you can then again apply the Bayes rule and you get an uh, updated belief for time one. And the updated belief at time one would depend on the signal that you have observed at time zero, as well as the beliefs that your neighbor have reported to you at time zero. Now, what happens if you go to time two? At time two, you again receive uh, additional reports from your neighbor. And these reports have changed from what they were at time one. And to interpret this change, you have to consider what has uh, caused this change. So you need to make inferences about uh, the observations of your neighbor, which are not available to you. You only observe your neighbors, but you don't know what your neighbors observe. If you go to time three, it is even worse, because then you have to consider what observations the neighbor of a neighbor may have that lead to some observation of a neighbor, that then lead to the shift of belief in the neighbor. And uh, going beyond that, it becomes a very complex inference task because at each point in time, in order to understand completely a shift in the belief of a neighbor, you have to consider all contingencies in the neighbors of the neighbors of the neighbors that lead to eventually a shift in the neighbor. And this is a, a main drawback of the Bayesian approach to this learning problem, that it becomes computationally intractable. The alternative is for the agents uh, to use some kind of averaging rule to put the, their observations together. So without being, uh, trying to be fully rational about what they observe, they just uh, get uh, reports from their neighbors and sum them together, divide them by the numbers, or any other kind of averaging to aggregate their observations together. This is the rule of thumb. So, but it still can provide uh, many of the properties of a Bayesian uh, approach. That's uh, agents following uh, this kind of rule of thumb. They can still learn the truth. And, uh, and it, it can happen with uh, particular rate. And uh, the, the analysis in network setting is quite possible. So it offers some properties of uh, the Bayesian approach and it also becomes computationally tractable. In our approach, we look back at this update that we calculated between the observations at time zero and the belief at time one. This update takes, uh, takes in uh, reports from neighbors and a private observation and outputs an updated belief. So if you look at it this way, then it is a mapping with an input and with an output that you can replicate for all future time steps. So in a sense, it is some kind of averaging rule. So if you treat it this way, then uh, by replicating this update for all future time steps, you have an approach toward driving uh, a similar kind of rule of thumb. And we argue that this is uh, how a rational but memoryless agent would behave. An agent that uh, has come to receive reports from uh, uh, from his or her neighbors, but cannot trace these reports to their roots. 
So he forgets all uh, history of past observations and bases decisions just based on uh, what is reported to, uh, to her. And then such an agent, in order to interpret uh, her knowledge, he has to, uh, he can only put uh, her decision based on impromptu priors, random and time varying priors. That, uh, that cannot be rooted back to any observation other than what she, can, she has come to know. So we have the same update that we had between time zero and one, but we have replaced uh, the priors with some random variables, and we have kept uh, the b reported beliefs at time zero, replaced it with the reported belief at any time, and we get an uh, updated belief. There's a particular choice of prior uh, proportional to uh, to a time varying exponent of the reported beliefs, and if you replace this uh, particular choice of prior in the update rule, then you get a log linear update that you put the math eta of t on your belief and one minus eta of t on your neighboring beliefs, and also takes into account your private observation. So, given this uh, log linear averaging that we have derived through this approach, you can analyze it in a network setting. It is tractable, and you can, dry, uh, you can identify necessary and sufficient conditions for the agents in the network to learn using this uh, like linear averaging. These conditions are, first of all, global identifiability, which means that for any pair of states that you want to distinguish, there has to be some agent somewhere in the network that can distinguish these two states. And this is a mild condition, because if it, if it doesn't hold true, then there is no hope for the agents to ever learn or to ever be able to distinguish those truths. We have also a strongly connectedness requirement. That is, between any two agents in the network, there has to be a pass, because if the agents are going to benefit from each other's uh, observations, then, uh, then uh, these observations have to be able to channel through the network. So this is, again, a reasonable requirement. And finally, we have a requirement on these uh, time-varying exponents. And this is a summability condition. The sum of the weights that you put on your neighbors, over time, they have to uh, be a finite number. And this can only happen if there's uh, weights that you put on the neighbors converge to zero. And this is an interesting observation uh, in analyzing uh, this like, linear update. That First of all, the agents, they need to communicate with each other because each of them is facing some identification problem based only on their private observation. There is no hope for them to completely learn the truth. But these communications should be such that over time you put more and more mass on your, on your own belief and less and less mass on what you observe from your neighboring beliefs. So if you start from a connected network, over time you get a collection of isolated nodes. And this is, a, this is a, an insight that uh, analysis of the, this uh, rational update provides a tweet. And uh, it highlights a, a driving force in the behavior of rational but memoryless agents. And this is actually in, uh, in modeling something uh, as complex as uh, behavior. This is as much as you can hope. You can never precisely model these behaviors, but, you can, but the modeling can always provide you with some insight or some uh, or can can bring to attention some driving force in these behaviors. And that's uh, as, as much as you can expect from a model. So uh, we presented the learning without recall model. And the main features of it was that it provides a tractable framework for analyzing rational behavior in networks. And it also gave a behavioral foundation for, uh, for, uh, for some uh, uh, log linear averaging that is considered as a non-Bayesian update rule in the literature. And the key idea was that uh, the Bayesian, you take the Bayesian update between time zero and one, that is quite uh, tractable and uh, computable, and then you get this structure and, re and uh, repeat it for all future time steps. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thanks, Samin. Uh, questions from the judges? So I have one question. So um, you presented a, an interesting model. Can you share a little bit more about a practical application of what you just presented? From um, So the, the thing that kept on recurring to me was when you're learning from your neighbors um, in kind of the social network, how do you verify the truth? Um, so you're going to come to some conclusion about the truth, right? How do you verify that that conclusion is actually um, truthful, uh, given the fact how you're learning? You know, it's almost like that. Um, it just made me think about that Chinese uh, 
telephone <laughs> where <laughs> you're not quite sure what is actually happening as a, you um, gather the information. So given the fact that I didn't see kind of how you didn't show an, a, an example where you've applied your work, can you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, sure, but about the truthfulness of the reports, here we are, um, uh, here we are assuming that uh, every agent, when they are reporting their beliefs, they are truthful about the reports because they have no incentive. To be known. The only objective that we are uh, considering in this uh, problem is learning the truth. So as far as learning the truth is concerned, for a, for a rational agent at a given point in time, they have no incentive to be not truthful about their reports. Uh, but of course, this is a simplified model, and it can only provide some, uh, some aspects. I mean, uh, all such models, you, you can only see some aspects of, uh, of what's going on based on your simplifications, and nothing more. And... Uh, are the agents uh, sensors? I mean, the abstract terms, are the agents sensors? So they're um, you're assuming that the sensors are reporting what they see in a very clear way. But if there's more than in the environment, then the sensors have a higher probability. In the problem of social learning, uh, these agents are uh, abstraction of people. But uh, of course, this problem has uh, very close parallels, almost identical parallels in uh, sensor network testing. And then uh, there, uh, your objective is to detect uh, or uh, detect a phenomena, for example, the existence of a target in a location, or to estimate some amount, for example, some temperature of the field. Or uh, and in those uh, in those scenarios as well, every sensor has some local observation that is not sufficient to completely determine. Uh, the case of the matter. For example, to completely determine the location of a target, every sensor has only partial information. And then, there again, you can put all these partial informations together to uh, to reason about the truth of the case, and then and to, or to take the phenomena out. And that's it's kind of bookend on Michelle's comment, um, right? You kind of motivated it with uh, kind of human-like shapes. Uh, but you also talked about kind of path planning of kind of agglomerations or, or groupings of devices or sensors. I, I guess I could assume drones of some sort. Um, are models like this ever used in different contexts, uh, like dealing with human behavior? Um, it kind of seems underpinned by this assumption of rational behavior. Um, and I know a lot of models break down when you consider irrational human behavior. Is that embedded in this model? Could it be? Could it have applicability to, say, the outcomes of elections? Um, or saving versus spending? There are uh, many uh, behavioral approaches to this problem as well. That uh, they do not have the assumption of their rationality, but they put other kind of assumptions. And they take in other aspects of the rationality. is just one aspect of the If you and if your focus is to, uh, to investigate the consequence of this particular aspect, then you put in the assumption of rationality and just drive conclusions. But if you focus on your name of your research is to highlight other aspects, then you can, uh, you can have different assumptions with different models. You get uh, different conclusions that have, uh, that then have to be interpreted given those. And is that kind of captured by the weighting um, of how my beliefs affect my updated beliefs versus your beliefs affect my updated beliefs? That's a very good point. For example, in a model when the agents may be uh, untruthful, then you can put different based on the weight. Then, uh, for example, over time, you may come to trust some data, so you put more and more weight on that particular data which you come to trust, and you put less and less weight on the data that you trust the reports from. This kind of model is capturing this uh, Plus, over time, that can uh, become stronger or become weaker. But then, to capture the, the, that that uh, that phenomena, that aspect, you need to yeah, you need to have different kinds of something. You need a different kind of model. Not totally different, though, right? I mean, the the basic core model you're using would be correct, right? You just have to make a switch out at that point of n neighbor trust, I guess. Or am I incorrect in that assumption? Uh, well, uh, in order to capture that, you definitely need to, uh, yes, for example, you, you can start, yeah, you're, you're correct. Actually, you can start from uh, an averaging book, and then you can have these uh, 
uh, base that you present uh, the, the trust that you have to work with your and then this is and then you have to decide how these two apple uh, is based on that is between your lead and the corporate lead or based on how certain of these I think I do with that mic. Uh, so whenever I hear a talk on decision making, I, the words come up, robustness and convergence rates. Uh, how robust is this to the assumptions that the, the it seemed, maybe I missed it, but there seem to be a lot of assumed parameters, things that you build in, you have some knowledge of. And uh, if that knowledge is wrong, what happens to this uh, to this for example, you need to know the likelihood of the signals. Otherwise, you cannot, uh, given the signals, you cannot uh, interpret them. If you don't know the likelihood of the signal, then you have to have some other way of interpreting the signal. That could be hard to get, but then, I mean, my background before I reformed a better person with radar signal processing and missiles and nasty things that we had to build models that, you know, meant to build people and other things like that. It was important to know certain things about these things or otherwise you couldn't succeed. Uh, so you're doing nice things. I don't understand that. But the things, models still go wrong, and I'm trying to understand uh, uh, what could go wrong here. And it can uh, actually, yes, it can go wrong with uh, engineering, and it can go way more wrong uh, when you're dealing with people. But then, this model is only highlighting some aspect. For example, in this then you analyze the model, you get as much of it is as much as you can hope from this model. Or, uh, for example, in a game theory setting, you may have that the political parties, the national equilibrium is that they have all the same policy. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen in, in practice, but what it means is that this is a driving force to the behavior of uh, political companies. And they are trying to attract voters. They have to have, they have their policies have to come back. Yeah, it's, it's not going to happen, and it doesn't mean that the modeling is useless, or even it doesn't mean that the modeling is wrong. It means that given this model, that is the aspect of the truth that you are highlighting. One last thing, what about rate of convergence, given that you had time varying things going on? Yes, I, 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 I kind of wonder, maybe things slosh around and don't work. Well, uh, the, the condition that I gave are necessary and sufficient for uh, convergence, and also I have the rate of convergence. Do you have rates on convergence? Yes, yes. I can't find I have a lot of here for us. Okay, so you didn't tell us this, but okay. Yes, it's I there. Don't, I mean, I just to All right, now I understand. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It sounds like maybe there are more things to talk with Amin about after this. And if anyone else had questions, definitely grab him at the happy hour. But for now, 